Welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, January 22nd, 2016. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Opposition leader Annie Eustace is questioning the heavy-handedness of police officers dealing with protesters in capital Kingstown. Earlier this week, a number of protesters were arrested and four ended up being charged for annoyance. They are accused of assembling together outside the precincts of the electoral office with the intent to carry out a common purpose to wit disruption of the operation of the electoral office to commit a breach of the peace. On the picket line yesterday, where a Grenadian journalist was picked and later released without being charged, Eustace says that the 2000 roadblock revolution did not have the number of arrests and harassment meted out by the police as seen today. What happened in 2000? Everybody has forgotten that now. The New Democratic Party then called out the forces. A Prime Minister of Trinidad came here to do negotiations in 2000. And he had to walk across the airport. He couldn't even pass out of the airport. He had to walk across the runway to go to a meeting. Because but we have done nothing like that. We've had a simply peaceful protest. And that's what we'll continue to do. Peaceful protest. Those who want to disturb that, there comes a time when nobody will have any control if you continue the way we're doing now. That's what will happen in the end. The Prime Minister has been claiming on radio that you have, the protesters have been um, threatening the supervisor of elections, you have been boisterous. Any comments on that? Who has been boisterous? Threat well, he said the protesters have, have been boisterous. Yes, and have been threatening the supervisor of elections, and she's fearful and so forth. They're threatening you know? her. I'm not aware she's been threatened. She has a lot of questions to answer. And she'll answer them. And you quote the law. And Grenadian journalist Hamlet Mark says that his arrest yesterday while covering the protest event in front of the electoral office in capital Kingstown will not end there. Mark has an extensive career as a journalist. He is the former manager of the Grenada Broadcasting Corporation and has worked for Fox News Miami, Associated Press, Reuters and numerous Caribbean news agencies. Today he operates his own news distribution service, Carib Update News. In an interview with SVG Television News earlier today via telephone, as he has since returned to Grenada, Mark explained that he has been covering the protest for several weeks and yesterday he was filming from across the street of the electoral office when police reinforcement arrived. He says that the police then approached him and he was apprehended and taken to the barracks where he was initially charged with suspicion of obstruction but was then released and the charge was withdrawn after spending two and a half hours at the central police station. We are um, moving away from the protest and towards the road to, to get a better shot of the uh, truck that brought the uh, police in. And it was at that point that uh, one of the senior officers there uh, told two of the junior guys to, to um, go to the police station. And uh, so they came, grabbed me by the hand and the waist, and she went to go. So on our way to the, to the station, by the time we got to the financial complex, the, the Prime Minister's office area there, I said to them, so tell me something, am I under arrest? And the officers told me they don't know. And the, the uh, boss uh, told them to, to take me to the station. So they brought me there. I was booked and, you know, sat there. The veteran journalist says while in police custody, he was questioned and accused of being anti-government in his coverage of the protest and was told that he should go back to his homeland. And we did a couple of officers asked me questions, my name, what, you know, what I'm doing here, that kind of thing. And then I, I got a, just a, a barrage of verbal abuse from a number of officers, uh, such as, oh, you're the guy that uh, filming all these negative things about sending national to the world, and we don't want you to go back to Grenada, and why are you so anti-ULP, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, one of the police officers said that um, this protest have gone on too long. All the protesters should be arrested. And I'm there just giving them exposure by sending out the message to the world. So I think they were, they were pleased um, about our work uh, up 
three at points. I also suspect that it might have been strategic in the sense that once they call in the red police, they wanted to make sure that I was off the street and uh, so could, could not capture anything that transpired once the red police uh, were called in. And that is my theory on why I was uh, taken into the police station. Meanwhile, when SVG TV News contacted the Commission of Police on the issue, he stated that he did not have a chance as yet to speak with the arresting officers and that he is still accumulating detailed facts surrounding the matter. And the Prime Minister and Minister of National Security again praised the restraint he said is shown by the police in dealing with protesters in front of the electoral office. Persons have been demonstrating there since the results of December 9, 2015 general elections, which the NDP deemed to be contaminated, though the observers from regional and international organizations said the process was free and fair. Yesterday, the protest action heightened, resulting in a clash between the police and the protesters. On radio yesterday, Dr. Gonsalves said that the reasonableness with which officers have been conducting themselves is highly commendable. You rush as leader, yeah. useless that yeah. is, to say <clears throat> that it is the police making it worse, the police acting yeah. unreasonably, the police <clears throat> is, is, is doing some foolishness, when in fact you're going in front of the supervisor of elections office and other people who are working there to intimidate them, to harass them. Yeah. So the police, while the police are acting with restraint, there must come a time when the police must say no. no you're going too far. You're going far too far. Yeah. And indeed, across this country, the mantra which I hear is that, boy, the police are restrained. The police ain't out to do anything to squeeze them. Police are acting yes, yes. with reasonableness and restraint. Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonsalves has described yesterday's protest action by the opposition, New Democratic Party, the NDP, as infantile. On a radio program yesterday afternoon, Dr. Gonsalves said that while the opposition is protesting, his ruling Unity Labour Party, the ULP administration, is working on ensuring that the business of this country is secured. It is working and, and the opposition is um, protesting and involve, involving an infantile protest, another protest which nobody outside a narrow group of disgruntled people in the NDP is supporting. Absolutely. Look, <laughs> well, is every day since the elections I've been receiving letters of congratulations from governments and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and so on and so all over the world of all, all kinds. The Prime Minister also scoffed at the lack of numbers on the protest line and claimed that the some 100 to 200 protesters is a laughable figure. It's seen by the vast majority of people as an absolute waste of time ridiculous without any basis and people say boys a lot of mad people involved in this thing mm -hmm. people use other language more severe than that <laughs> <laughs> you know so so Clem um, and, 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 and then it turned out today to have a protest I'm told that they had Users called, I understand, for a mass protest. I understand he had any time between 100 and 200 people. This, this, this mass protest. Lawyers representing the NDP's candidate in the December 2015 general elections, Benjamin Exeter, say there seemed to be a witch hunt against their client as he continues to be targeted. At media conference earlier this week, Israel Bruce with his senior legal counsel, K. Bacchus Brown, spoke on why they believe that their client is being targeted. The question that the unsuspecting or the suspecting Vincent and the public would want to ask is whether or not at the time in the constituency of North Leeward there was an ongoing meeting. Was there a meeting of the collective of 
supporters of Carlos James in Petibidel on that particular day? Was there a meeting of supporters of Roland Matthews in Petibidel on that particular day? If it was, then quite naturally there was a meeting and we do know there is an admission that a weapon was exposed and ammunition was released from that particular weapon. Bruce further implied that the lack of an investigation into the discharging of a firearm by the UOP's candidate in the December 2015 general elections, Carlos James, questions the integrity of how matters are being investigated. The question that has to be asked is, if there was proper conduct of investigation, why hasn't there been charges laid against uh, Carlos June, but there's there's a charge against Benjamin Exeter? Well, let's let's separate Carlos James and Benjamin Exeter. Carlos James is a candidate for the ruling Unity Labour Party in the last general elections. Benjamin Exeter, a candidate for the New Democratic Party in the last elections. And you recall when we first went to court on this matter, I did indicate without any um, fear of so doing that we were very satisfied in our mind that this was tantamount to political witch hunting. And we were, we were told some persons came to social media and they sought to seek to dismiss it as if it is, it is not significant and it is not the case. According to the legal mind, the fact that 16 days after the incident, Exeter was slapped with a fourth charge indicates that the police did not have anything concrete to charge his client with. But when you look at the reality of the, the final charge that uh, Senior Counsel Bacchus Brown just spoke to, we have a situation where, um, for those of you who are following as precisely as you should, where the Commissioner of Police made certain declarations about the initial two charges, yes? And 16 days later, 16 days later, we have this charge um, coming against Mr. Exeter uh, with relation to the weapon. Mind you, the weapon was taken off Mr. Exeter the very evening or of, of the 29th of December. So the question that you have to ask is this. Was there an offense with regards to the weapon at that time? If so, why didn't the police proffer that particular charge or those sets of charges on that particular day? Well, the, the answer to that question is nothing but obvious. That there was nothing for which to charge Mr. Ben Exeter with regards to the, the, the weapon which he has license to carry. He did indicate that he was, he was carrying his license and so um, the, the basis upon which to so do did not exist. So the witch hunting continued. Tackling serious organized crime in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a priority of the government. So says Attorney General Judith Jones Morgan in her introductory remarks at the launch of the Civil Asset Recovery Division card held earlier today at the Foreign Affairs Conference Room. An initiative of the Financial Intelligence Unit, the FIU, Jones noted that along with the Civil Recovery Legislation card ensures that unlawful activities do not accumulate in the hands of committers. The Office of the Attorney General is committed to working with the Financial Intelligence Unit and other government departments to respond to the threat that serious organized crime poses to our country. Civil recovery provides us with a new and powerful weapon against serious crime and it is of vital importance that we utilize the powers to their full potential. Post-conviction confiscation has been available as a tool for law enforcement and prosecutors in St. Vincent de Grenadines for over a decade. However, in the last 20 years, the nature of crime has changed. Crime today is largely cross-border. It is hugely profitable, and those who commit crime use increasingly sophisticated methods, including technology which permits swift and undetectable transfer of money. Civil asset recovery is a remedial statutory device designed to recover the proceeds of unlawful activity as well as property used to facilitate unlawful activity. Financial Crimes Advisor of the Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs, INL, Nicola Suter, said that criminal organizations become more sophisticated and organized, which poses an even greater challenge for the criminal justice system. Hence the reason why the development of CARD is so essential.
challenges we, the criminal justice agencies, face are both numerous and profound. We now know that worldwide the cross-border flow of the proceeds from criminal activity has been estimated to be as great as $1.6 trillion per year. In the Caribbean, drug trafficking often serves as a gateway crime, paving the way for other associated crimes such as money laundering, gangs, trafficking in firearms, and other sorts of transnational organized crime. It's no exaggeration to say that this undermines the fundamental promise of democracy. It imperils development, security, stability, our economy, and ultimately, the trust that we place in our criminal justice system. Perhaps the most devastating effect is on our young, impressionable members of society. Commending the work of the SVG criminal justice system, Suta noted that SVG continues to be a pioneer in instilling law and order as it is the first in the region to have initiated a division such as CARD. She added that the Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs remains proud of SVG's initiatives to tackle money laundering and its predicate offenses and is confident that CARD will be a success. With robust civil asset recovery legislation in place and a highly trained specialist team committed to enforcing it in appropriate cases, we have every reason to hope and believe that making a good living out of crime will be largely impossible in this country in the future. As the Financial Crimes Legal Advisor to the Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs, I have been proud to be able to work with our exceptional partners in St Vincent and the Grenadines in this endeavour. I am confident that the newly formed Civil Asset Recovery Division will be hugely beneficial to your civil asset recovery work. I look forward to seeing this division bear fruit by recovering, by recovering criminal property and reinvesting that money into this wonderful country in a positive way by bolstering resources across the criminal justice system and better resourcing vital community programs such as drug rehabilitation and education. Meanwhile, drawing awareness to the dangers of transnational organized crimes and the impact it has on the community, especially the youths, Program Advisor of the International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs, INL, Goran Gojiv. Eski, that's Gojeveski, warned that no member of the criminal justice system should sit back and allow criminals to do what they want. Speaking at the launch of the Civil Asset Recovery Division, Gojeveski said that this initiative will indeed foster greater awareness of the criminal justice system and aid in the prevention of crime. With training available for security forces, he noted that they can be reinforced to hit criminals where it hurts most by taking their assets. has continuously proven that it is the role model in this region. We are a country that is an excellent example where modern criminal codes are strengthening the criminal justice system. I am proud to say that our criminal justice advisor has worked tirelessly to assist you in all the EC countries and their leaders in the areas that you thought you had improvement. You are the leader, together with Dominica, in passing the procedure crime legislation, and now with the launch of the Civil Asset Recovery Division, we are demonstrating once again that you know your path and you know what needs to be done in the never-ending fight against crime. Gojeveski praised the FIU for its continued work in the diminishing criminal activities in SVG. He further urged persons to be devoted to eradicating crime in SVG so as to inspire change across the region. The Intelligence Unit and its former director, Mr. Brandon Williams, as well as the current director, Ms. Latisha San Sandy, have been invaluable partners in achieving these goals. On our end, the person who made it all possible is Ms. Nicola Sutter. I believe that your tremendous achievements will inspire the rest of the countries in the region to follow your lead and that they will pass the Proceeds of Crime Act. We must be proactive and have the legal remedies necessary to terminate the flow of illicit crap cash and assets. If we work together, we can successfully prevent criminal networks from flourishing. A jail term of 24 months was this morning handed down on Alwyn Cador, a 60-year-old national of Grenada, 
by Chief Magistrate Ration Brown when he appeared in court and pleaded guilty to three separate charges of possession of 223 pounds of marijuana with possession for purpose of drug trafficking and attempting to export same. Kador was intercepted with the drug by members of the SPG Coast Guard who were on routine patrol in the Canawan area on May 19, 2015. A speedboat for which Kador was the captain was seen traveling in the opposite direction. It was signaled to stop by the Coast Guard to which they complied. A search was conducted leading to the discovery of the drugs in several nylon sacks and a bucket. The Ministry of Education continued a series of school visits this week with new Minister of Education Sinclair Jimmy Prince, Parliamentary Secretary Deborah Charles along with other ministry officials. Minister Prince noted that the visits are in keeping with his back-to-school message where he noted that 2016 will be a year of recommitment to the development of education in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Meet and greet was held at the New Grounds and New Prospect Primary Schools and the Bible Methodist School early this week. Here's a look at those proceedings. <laughs> Yes. 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 Yes.